Hey everybody, Andy with RS Experience, and today I'll be covering performance and some of the features and specs of the 991.2 GT3 RS. Hey everybody, so let's uh, go ahead and let's get started with uh, downforce. So there's, there's about one, two, three, four, five areas of downforce I wanna talk about with the car today. So the first one's gonna be these NACA ducts here. So what the NACA ducts are doing, they're doing two things. One is they're providing air to cool the brakes. And the second thing they're doing is they're helping to reduce the drag on the car. Uh, the next thing I wanna to touch on is I wanna to touch on the, um, these vents, the fender well vents. So these here, um, what they're essentially doing is when the wheel is going around, there's a lot of pressure that builds up underneath the fender. So this is releasing the pressure from the wheel well, which in turn brings the car closer to the road. So hugs the car down to the road. Um, that's what these uh, vents are for. Coming around to the front of the car, you'll see the splitter. So there's a side splitter here and along the front. And if you notice, the, this is much bigger on the dot two versus the, the 991. This again is helping to bring that front of that car down low. Next, I'm gonna uh, move around to the side here. Um, the uh, sill, you know, the, the extended sill, the rocker here on the RS, this is probably an inch or so wider than it is on the uh, GT3. And what this is, you're, ex you're essentially extending the underside of the car, right? These cars are totally flat underneath. So by extending the width of the car, it's actually bringing and sucking the car down to the road. And then the last piece that I'll share regarding some of the downforce is, is the rear wing. And so the RS has 350, to 400 pounds of downforce on the total car. And the wing, this wing is actually adjustable. You can change the attack of the wing, which um, primarily helpful when you're on the track. So when I talk about this 350, 400 pounds of downforce, you're really feeling that mostly on the track because this wing, you will not feel at uh, the impact of it driving at normal speed limits. You really have to be above 90 miles an hour to really get the effect of this wing pushing the rear end of the car down to the road. So those are kind of the key areas I wanted to go over um, regarding downforce. Um, next, we'll move to wheels and brakes. Okay, so next we're gonna move on to wheels, brakes, rotors, tires. Oh my. Um, so first up is the wheels. So the wheels on the RSs are uh, 20 inch diameter nine and a half inches wide. Um, the rotors, so the standard iron rotor is 380 millimeters in the front, 380 in the rear. And I'll talk about the rear in a moment. But these are the carbon ceramic brakes. And the reason you know they're carbon ceramic is because the yellow brake calipers. The iron brakes have a red caliper. So on the iron rotors, uh, the fronts are actually 410 millimeters. So you get a 30 millimeters longer. And if you look at these things, they're like the size of a pizza. And the front um, has a six piston uh, brake caliper. Whether you have ceramics or the iron, they're both six piston. So there's a little bit about the, uh, the brakes, the rotors, the wheels, the tires. So the cars actually come with two tires. One is the Michelin uh, Pilot Sport Cup 2 and the other is the, Dun the Dunlop uh, Sport Race Max or Max Race tire. Those are the two that come with the car. I know some people got really bummed out if they got the Dunlop tires because everybody wanted the Michelin, but I'll tell you, I had the Dunlops on my GT3, uh, dot two, my 991.2 GT3, and what I found out about the Dunlops was they're much more forgiving, like when you're going around the bends on street driving, they have a little bit softer sidewall. And I felt like when you were driving, if the car slid, it was very progressive and kind of controllable. Sometimes on the Michelin, when they get really hot, these can just kind of let go on you. They can kind of break, but they do have a better sidewall, I believe, 
than the Dunlops. But hey, Porsche's you know checked all these things out and whatnot. And then the front tires are a um, 265 35, I want to say, is the size of this tire. So without me getting into a, a whole long conversation about that, so 260 35. Uh, 265 35 what that means is that the tire is 265 millimeters wide and the 35 represents a ratio for the height so essentially what it is is take the 265 multiply it by 0.35 or it's 35 percent of the width is how big the height is so that's when you see 265 35 that's what that means and then the 20 is just telling you that that's the diameter of the rim. So um, that's it for the front. Let's go ahead and squeeze to the back. Okay, next let's talk about these bad boys on the, on the rear tires. So these rims are 21 by 12. So there's a staggered setup, 20, 20 inch diameter in the front, 21 inch in the rear. These are a whole 12 inches wide. So two and a half inches wider than the front of the car. The rotors here, again, on the iron, they would be 380 millimeters. On the ceramic brakes, they're 390 millimeters. And as I mentioned a moment ago, the calipers are four piston calipers. It's the same whether you have iron or um, uh, ceramics. The rear tires, um, I already talked about the brands of tires. It's the same. Now it's, it's a, a matter of the, the width of the tires. And these are actually a 325-30. So 325 millimeters, I mean, this is like a foot or a little more than a foot on the road. So 325 millimeters. And then these have a 30 um, aspect, you know, for the, for the height here. So say, you know, 325 times 30% tells you what the height of this is. And again, these are 21 inches in diameter. These things are huge. Um, a quick note on the center locks. So the RSs and the GT3s come with center locks, right? They look cool, and if you were imagining if you were in a race and you had to change your tires real quick when you come in the pits, it's real easy to just, you know, one thing you have to pull off, get the next tire, throw it on, zip it on. doesn't quite work that way for the, um, the street version, but that's kind of the intent here. The good news on these things is once they're locked, these things don't loosen up. I, I, have, I haven't heard of anybody having an issue with these loosening up. So if you guys track and you get these things tight, you don't have to tighten them up. We're on a five lug, usually in between sessions, you're gonna go and check to make sure your, your lugs are tight. Um, center locks, you don't have to worry about that. The one thing I, the one note I will add about the center locks is the hub of the center lock needs to be refurbished every 6,000 track miles. Notice I said 6,000 track miles. That's a lot of events. And essentially what that involves is you got to take it into the, you know, Porsche. I don't, you could do it yourself if you're a super DIY. Um, and you have to get all these hubs kind of redone. And it's like $1,500 a hub. I think it's, I think it's 6,000 bucks to do the whole thing. Um, if somebody out there knows the exact number, you want to put it in the comments below, I would appreciate that. Um, so I think that's it on wheels, brakes, tires, rotors. Okay, so now I'm gonna run into some of the weight saving features on the car. So one, you know, is obviously these beautiful carbon fiber uh, bucket seats. Uh, these are pretty much standard on the GT3 RS. You can get the 18 ways that are a little bit more supportive. Um, you can see the carbon weave through here. And, and one of the things I do on my car, this is just my personal touch, is in the US, the car comes with a pad in this section right here. There's like a neck pad. I really don't like it because when you're on track and you're wearing a helmet, it kind of messes with your head. Plus, I don't like the way it looks. This is the way the European models get it. And what was on the 918 is you don't have that pad there. So I take that pad out. I think it looks cleaner. I don't know. What do you think? You like it? Okay, continuing on with the weight savings. So the front hood on the RS, as well as the GT3, I believe, but the GT3 RS is a carbon fiber hood. And of course you can get the Visoc package, which was the exposed carbon fiber hood, but hey, they're all carbon fiber. So that's a, that's a lightweight savings. The other thing that's carbon fiber is the front fender. So the whole front fender here is also carbon fiber to reduce weight. And 
one of the things that I was a little shocked to learn was that I think someone told me that if, if you get into an accident or something, this front fender has to be replaced. It's like $15,000 just for this fender. So moving along, I'm going to go to the roof here. And so the roof on the car is actually made of magnesium. Uh, um, the, I think the GT3, other cars, it is carbon fiber. But here it's actually magnesium. And magnesium is just... I don't know what the difference is like. It's, it's a pound difference for this whole roof, magnesium versus carbon fiber, but another one of those weight savings things. Um, next, I'm going to move around to the rear glass. So the glass here at the rear side window, as well as the rear window, is a lightweight Gorilla Glass. You've probably heard of Gorilla Glass before, like stuff that's on your iPhone and whatnot. So this is a little bit lighter weight. It's not the same as like regular glass. You can almost hear a little difference in the sound of that. And then also the rear window does not have a rear window defroster. You know, the lines you see in there for your rear window defroster. Um, there isn't anything in the, in the back. And then the last two things are um, the front and rear bumpers are uh, polyurethane, fancy word for plastic. And then the car has a titanium rear exhaust. This rear quarter panel here, um, so this A pillar that comes up, a pillar here in this section is actually um, made of uh, me metal. This is metal. The doors are aluminum. Yeah, I don't think this is aluminum. I may have that wrong, guys. Um, I know the doors are aluminum. I think this might be steel uh, versus aluminum. But those are some of the weight-saving features of the 991 GT3 RS. So next, I just want to take a minute and talk about the PDK transmission. And in the, the RS, I mean, gosh, they... They always have the ability to do some little software tweaks, you know, to always make these things better. And so the, the, the PDK transmission in this car is just, it's phenomenal. It's amazing. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out here, so the PDK transmission uh, is essentially two transmissions in one. Uh, think of it as you have the even number gears on one part of the transmission and odd number gears on the other. And what that means or what's happening is while you're driving and say you're accelerating, the car knows, well, he's accelerating or she's accelerating and he's probably going to want to go to the next gear. So if I'm in first gear and the car's like, okay, he's going to go to second gear, he's going to go to the next gear, it'll start spooling up the second gear on the other part of the transmission. So by the time you go into second, it's already up to speed. So there's no lag at all. Same thing when you're braking. If you're braking and now you're probably going to downshift, go from, say, fourth to third to second, it says, oh, he's in fourth. He's starting to brake. I'm going to spool up that other, that other um, transmission, if you will, the other gears. So then when you pop in the third, it goes into that gear if you're going fourth to third really quick. So when I drive my car, I love, I always drive in manual mode. I rarely, you can just put this thing in drive and drive it like any other automatic on the street. I like to put it in manual mode. So in manual mode, you're basically pulling it down to drive and then you're pushing, this thing will move to the left and I'm popping it to the left. Now I'm in manual mode, which means I'm using the paddles here behind the wheel to do my shifting. So the right side is I'm going up one, two, three, I mean, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The left side, I'm going down, right? Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So I can do that from the paddles. And I like doing that from the paddles because I always have my hands on the wheel. Because I always, I'm, you know, always driving two hands on the wheel. However, if I want to, I have the option, again, while in manual mode, to use the shifter to also shift. So I can pull it back to go up two, three, four, five, six, or I could push it forward, just keep giving it little pushes forward to go five, four, three, two, one. So it, it depends on your preference. You like doing that and like shifting here, or you like using the paddles. My preference is I like using the paddles. Um, I wish the paddles were a little longer and they do sell aftermarket extensions because sometimes when you're turning the wheel and depending on what you're turning, you just kind of wish they were a little bit longer um, to shift. But the speed at which they shift is as quick as you can shift them. It's fast. And I was really surprised how much quicker it was in the dot two than the dot one. It is noticeably different, the speed of the shifting between the two cars. One more thing was there's a PDK sport button here. 
And I, I primarily use the PDK Sport while I'm on the track because I will put this in drive. I will not shift manually. I will let the car do the shifting. And the reason I do that is in sport and on the track, what I've been told is the computer in the car will actually learn the track. Essentially, they'll learn you're driving on the track. And after you do several laps, it knows where to downshift and upshift. So when I went on the track the first time in PDK Sport, say with this car, it was shifting in some weird places and kind of threw me off a little bit. But after about three or four laps, the car was like, okay, he's really going fast. He's on the brakes real hard. Okay, I'm going to want to downshift here. And it just, it learned where it needed to shift. And by about the maybe fifth lap or so, it, it knew all the right shift points. And it's amazing. And it is extremely fast. There's no way I would shift manually at the track because I could not do it. Is, is nearly as good as the PDK. So this is a wonderful transmission. So anyway, that's it on PDK. One thing I did want to cover while we're, you know, by the car here is talk about these wind diffusers. So you can see this item in the triangle here has a little bit of a flange on it. You can see how it kind of flares out here. And essentially what this does is when the window is down, especially if you're on track, this reduces some of the buffeting in the car. So um, those of you who have like a four door, like an SUV or a sedan, did you ever keep the front windows up and you roll the back windows down a little bit and you get that pop, 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 that buffeting sound in the car with your ears going? Well, with these windows down and without this here and you're going down the track at like 110, 100 and up to 150 miles an hour, your helmet is rattling your eyeballs out in the car. And it's kind of weird that Porsche doesn't do this, but my understanding is, right, a lot of their tracks over there, they drive with the windows up. We're in the U.S., we drive with the windows down. Um, so I don't think they've ever run into the issue that says, oh, hey, there's a lot of wind buffeting. So I, this is one of the things I always put on. These are by AWE. I'll put a link down below in the description for these. There's another manufacturer called Black Mill. And that sells them too, and its flange probably sticks out another half to three quarters of an inch. Um, it's a little bigger, and those really help at speeds over, say, 130, 140, probably like 140. These are good up to about 140, 140, maybe 130, as long as you're not at that speed for a long time. But the black mill would be better if you guys are going to really uh, fast tracks like, say, Road America or something like that. The black mill would probably be a little bit better. Anyway, these guys are like, I forget what they were. They were more than I'd like to say. They were like 79, 80 bucks for these, um, but well worth it. Okay, that's it. The performance features and specs of the 991.2 GT3 RS. If you uh, enjoyed the video, please click the like button and also uh, please subscribe to the channel for more information like this, as well as some upcoming interviews. So stay tuned for those coming soon. Thanks, everybody. Take care.